Well, I honestly didn't really expect to be making another iceberg video so soon, but you all really liked the first one and I discovered a lot more things to talk about. This iceberg video will be a bit different from my last one due to the fact that I talked about most of the really known things in my last video. Essentially, everything in this video is a lot more in depth than my last iceberg video, so there might be a few things at the tip of the iceberg or in the shallow waters that would have been lowered down in my last iceberg video. Oh, and one last thing. I recommend you go watch my previous iceberg video if you haven't already, because some of the things in this iceberg video are connected to things in my last iceberg video. With all of that out of the way, I will now start at the tip of the iceberg. If you position your camera into a certain area near the stern of the Tamar class lifeboat, you're able to find a picture of Captain Marson's face. When you are loading into Dynamic Ship Simulator 3, there's a chance that the game won't be completely loaded by the time you make it to the menu screen. If this happens, your name will appear to be only 20 characters. Although it is now harder to see this easter egg due to the optimization update which makes everything load faster, you might still be able to see it on occasion. By moving your camera underneath one of the control panels in the Alabama class container ship, you are able to see a flag and a rainbow bird. Before the Sally class cruise ferry received its interior update, positioning your camera into the hull of the Sally class while it was loaded would allow you to see a golden model of Tow Mater from the movie Cars. INRP, or Island Nations Roleplay, was essentially a giant roleplay where hundreds of players could choose to join one of many different nations. I won't be going too in-depth with INRP in this video, but the main things I think are important to know is that there was a huge storyline, which you can find on the SS3 wiki if you're interested, as well as guns, custom boats and aircraft, and big events such as blackouts and floods. At the start of the Freyr class trawler, you are able to find a marker that symbolizes the meme loss. At Woolen, you are able to go inside of the lighthouse located near the main port. While inside of it, you are able to talk to a person that gives out some information about the lighthouse. Warehouses are probably the most unknown and unused feature in DSS3. At most islands, you are able to find these yellow warehouses and when you go inside of them and click on this vent looking thing, your tools will be replenished. At Port Foster, you are able to find Pingu hiding under one of the houses. You are also able to find his house atop of one of the mountains. Hospitals are another feature that are barely ever used in DSS3. At a few different islands, you are able to find hospitals, and upon entering them, your health will be fully regenerated. With hospitals out of the way, we are now moving down to the shallow waters. In my last iceberg video, I talked about a few of the personal ships available for the developers and lead developers to spawn, but in this video I wanted to go a little more in depth about them. With that being said, I am not going to list off every personal ship I was able to find and that wasn't previously mentioned in my last iceberg video. Iowa class battleship, HMS Victory, HMS Vanguard, Yamato, and the Bismarck. The ORP Bliska Witza was also going to be added, but was never finished. On Bornholm, near Nexo, you used to be able to find a missile launcher that housed a Beagle missile. In real life, the missile was called the Nike Hercules. The Beagle missile was removed in Update 38. The Vibe Shack is a small house located near the south exit of the Woolen Port, and I must say, it is pretty vibey. The party boat is a Sally class cruise ferry, but with the windows flashing different colors. You are also able to hear party music coming from the ship. Stairland was a name given to stairs left over from the making of the lifeboat station at Puerto Yoshiwaya. The stairs were able to be found underneath Puerto Yoshiwaya. A few years ago, instead of the current lantern model, there used to be a different model for the lantern that looked like this. SCP-228 was located in the old warehouse at Nexo. Upon entering the warehouse, you would be buried with hundreds of life rafts. 
On screen, you're able to see the original SCP-228 post. Most of the land vehicles were made for the INRP and can only be spawned by the lead developers. Some of the land vehicles that are able to be spawned include an APC, Jeep, and the Beanmobile. However, there are also multiple other vehicles able to be spawned. Located close to Gutium near the ocean, you're able to find a small cave. Inside of this cave is a door, which as of right now does not serve any purpose that anyone has been able to figure out. On Bornholm, Syntax Connoisseur is able to spawn a train track as well as a Class 37 train. When spawned in, the train is able to be driven all around the island and even derail. A long time ago, there used to be a radio button that would show up at the top of your screen. Pressing this button would allow you to put in any Roblox music ID and play the song. The Amos Type 93 radar was an old location in DSS3 that could be found on Bornholm. This location was later removed with the Bornholm V2 update in Update 38. A long time ago, at the top of your screen, you are able to find a message board that would display tips that could help players that were newer to the game. A few years ago, multiple ships had different models than what they have now. Some of the ships that had different models were the Heavy Bolt Carrier, Search and Rescue Boat, and the Visby. When DSS3 was officially released, the old lobby was replaced with this menu screen. This menu screen was later replaced with the menu screen we have today. If you played DSS3 any time before Update 38, then you probably know that the map we have now is very different from the map that we used to have. Before Update 38, there's a completely different map than what we have now. The islands themselves look very different, and the actual locations of the islands were also different. In the current map, you are actually still able to see things that relate to the old map. One of these things is at the lifeboat station at Puerto Ushuaia. At the lifeboat station, you are able to find a picture of Wollen before it was remade, and at Wollen, you are able to find a sign that depicts Rudin before the map update. In the early stages of DSS3, instead of the map being in the style of a nautical map, the map was actually colored. With the colored map out of the way, we are now moving down to the depths. A few years ago, there was going to be another quest added to the game. This quest would have been called Wreck Hunter, and the way you would have completed it was by locating 10 different wrecks scattered at different shorelines. The reward would have been the Slelius or Glelius research submarine, I'm not too sure how you say it, but pretty much the reward would have been a small research submarine. Port Sea Island was an island that was planned, but was never added. On screen now, you are able to see a Trello page where Port Sea Island is listed as something coming in the next update. Right now, you are also able to see an old map concept that Port Sea Island is featured on. Using a script, the lead developers of the game are able to change the texture of any vessel into anything they want. Some textures that have been spotted in the game include the Black Ivor, Cheese Police Boat, and a Cat Trafalgar. Cargo V2 was a planned cargo system that was going to be added in Update 38. In a nutshell, the system would have made it so there was three different tiers of ships. For example, the light container ship would have been Tier 1, the Alabama would have been Tier 2, and the G2 would have been Tier 3. Each tier of ship made a fixed amount of money when delivering cargo, no matter how long the route was. So for example, the Alabama class might have made 75,000 credits going from Wollon to Puerto Ushuaia, but it would also make 75,000 credits going from Wollon to Ron. When you wanted to deliver cargo, you would also be randomly assigned a port to go to. You would not be able to choose the location you wanted to go to. Cargo V2 would have also incorporated mini games into the cargo system. For example, if you were driving a container ship, then you might have to manually load a few of the containers onto the boat using a crane. Another mini game would have been connecting hoses into oil tankers to load the ships with oil. Personally, I think the Cargo V2 system would have been pretty cool to have in the game, but most people didn't think that, and as a result, the system ended up being scrapped. During INRP, many different ships were custom made for the role plays. I will now list off the different ships created for INRP and some of the details about them if there were any. The first ship I will talk about is the Bay Class Landing Ship. 
This ship was a low-quality model made specifically for the INRP. The Bay-class landing ship was supposed to be remade into a higher-quality ship and added into the game for the public to use in Update 39, but obviously that never happened. However, it can still be found in the plans section on the Trello, so there is a small possibility it'll eventually be added. Another ship made for the INRP was Nakanevis, better known as the Seawise Giant. A fun fact about the Seawise Giant was that it was actually too big for DSS-3, so it was downscaled to be the size of the MV King Richard. The ship was later sunk as a part of the INRP. Another INRP boat was the LCVP Mark V. The LCVP Mark V was a remake of the LCVP Mark II, and it was supposed to be a skin that would be made purchasable to the public, but like the Bayclass landing ship, this model was never made purchasable. There were also two aircraft carrier models that I was able to find that were made for the INRP. One was the Ventacinco de Mayo, and one was the HMS Hermes. There was also apparently a model for an astute class submarine, however I was not able to find any photos of it. The only other ship made for the INRP that I was able to find was the Type 23 frigate. Like most of the other ships, this ship was supposed to be released to the public, but was never implemented because there was an issue with uploading the model to Roblox. A long time ago, there was a different interior to the Wollen Bunker. Inside of the bunker there were two rooms. The first room had multiple barrels inside of it, and the second room had even more barrels, but it also had a suit of power armor from the game Warhammer 40,000. The pink G2 was an exclusive G2 that was given to Captain Dreadnought. The tank under Woolen was a leftover tank model from the INRP that ended up getting placed under Woolen. The tank has since been removed. With the tank under Woolen out of the way, I am now going to move down to the final layer, the Abyss. There have been a few instances of people achieving negative credits, however the only photos I could find of someone with negative credits was from a user named Bamman. The story behind Bamman's negative credits was that they literally just asked to be made the poorest person in DSS3, and Jorbunga made that wish come true by giving them negative 900 million credits. Three different times, twice in 2020 and once in 2021, the water was changed to a red or green color by a lead developer, but based on this photo, it was most likely Captain Marson all three times. Two of the times the water was just red, however on one of the days, the water was turned to a green and a message appeared in chat saying that it was jello. A very long time ago, when you spawned in a ship, instead of seeing the wooden HUD like you do today, you would instead see a blue HUD. With the blue HUD out of the way, that concludes my second part of my DSS3 iceberg. This is probably my last iceberg video I'll make for DSS3, or at least the last one I'll make for a while. I would like to give a big thank you to everyone whose photos or videos I used in the making of this video. If at any point I used your footage, your name will be down in the description. If you did enjoy the video, I would also really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe because it helps the channel a lot. I will also be hosting a 500,000 credit giveaway on my Discord server as soon as this video goes live, so make sure to join that too. With all that out of the way, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Bye.